Hello everybody and welcome back to the second shelf. Um, a couple of you have asked me in the comment sections um, over the last uh, few weeks uh, whether I'm going to do another crime ladies video. Um, I did one in October 2017. I will leave a link to that video down below in which I feature crime, obviously, uh, written by women. Um, and I thought, yeah, I, I want to do that. I want to do another Crime Ladies. Um, but April is also Aussie April. That's a readathon uh, run by Jacqueline over at Six Minutes for Me and Doris from All the Books. Um, and if you have not subscribed to those two, please go check out and subscribe. They, they are just fantastic. Uh, whenever I'm in a bad mood, like yesterday when the coffee breaker, uh, the coffee maker broke down and a lot of other shit happened, I'm just binge watching um, Doris's or and or Jacqueline's videos and then I feel better immediately. So go check them out. I leave a link to their announcement video down below. The idea of Aussie April is just to read Australian female authors for me, female, but Australian authors. Um, they, Jacqueline and Doris came up with four prompts. Uh, I will leave those down below as well, just to help you um, pick books. But it's not like challenges. You, you can just pick any book by an Australian author you like. Um, Jacqueline herself is from Australia, even though she lives in Texas now. And Doris loves readathons, so she's very good in organizing and that the two came together for Aussie April. And then I thought, why not combine these two things, crime ladies and Aussie April? So what I'm going to do in this video is recommendations for Aussie crime. So Aussie crime ladies. Um, and I picked, um, you know, standalones, uh, more the lighthearted, more gritty, uh, indigenous author, uh, a series set in, an, uh, in, in the 1930s, so more historical crime fiction, a modern classic, and also a non-fiction book, A True Crime. So I hope this combination, um, there is something in that for everybody. And my first pick is probably uh, Australian's most famous uh, crime writer, and that is, of course, Leanne Moriarty. Uh, she was born in 1966 in Sydney, um, and she worked in marketing and advertising and uh, started writing crime fiction um, when she was in her early 30s. Uh, her books are all a big hit. You can pick actually any book that you want to, but of course I picked, because it's a, her most famous one, I guess, A Big Little Lies, which was published in 2014. Now the book has been made into an HBO series, which the series is great, but um, the producers decided to move um, uh, the plot to the United States. And the original book, of course, is set in uh, Australia in a little beach town. Um, and even though the series is great, it of course lacks that typical um, Australian atmospheric feeling to it. Da, because it's set in the US. So even though if you have watched the series, you can still really, really enjoy the book. So it, it's centering around um, a group of women, um, um, most famously Madeline, um, uh, uh, Celeste and Jane and a couple of others. They are all mothers who come together uh, because their children go to the same school. Uh, there are hidden um, secrets in the past, like Jane, who is a single mother uh, with a little boy, um, uh, and we don't know what happened to her, but there's something murky in her past. And then Madeline, who struggles with, uh, you know, his, her ex-husband, who has a new wife, uh, who's very much into yoga. Madeline hates her. And you have beautiful Celeste, who seems to have it all, you know, career, a fantastic husband, and uh, twin boys. Um, but... Beneath the surface, things are boiling, and Moriarty is perfect in letting that, you know, that boil slowly but surely come to the surface, and the ending is fantastic. So, Big Little Lies, of course, but just pick any Leanne Moriarty book uh, that uh, catches your fancy. My next pick is for those of you who want 
their crime a bit more gritty than the books uh, Leanne Moriarty writes. I mean, her, her books, Moriarty's books, are dark humoured at times, but they are they still have a kind of lightheartedness to them. So if you're more into the gritty, uh, then I would recommend Jane Harper. Um, and I picked her latest book, published last year, The Lost Man. Jane Harper was actually born in the UK, but she moved to uh, Australia when she was little, uh, six or eight, and she is an Australian citizen. So I don't think the fact that she was born outside of Australia should exclude her from my Aussie crime. Um, the Lost Man is set in the outbacks of Australia, and that also very much informs the atmosphere. It's hot, it's dry, um, it's dangerous if you are out in the hot and dry. Um, and the, the book opens when um, two brothers uh, find, or, or the body of the third brother is found, Cameron, way out. Uh, and he obviously died from uh, because of the heat. There is, he had no water with him. There's no water around him. And then the, the two brothers, Nathan in particular, who is the our main character in the book, um, starts to investigate or starts his own investigation, even though the police does some investigation, uh, in what really happened. Uh, did Cameron wanted to kill himself? Was there some, there's something murky also in, in, in the past, some family secrets. Um, and it's, it's a quite a slow burner in the first, let's say, 70, 80, 90 pages, uh, setting up the atmosphere, setting up the surroundings, the various uh, characters uh, surrounding Nathan. And slowly we get um, the story of the family, the family background, and of course in the end we will learn what really happened to poor Cameron. Uh, so this is um, uh, more of a why done it maybe than a who done it because Jane Harper very much focuses on the characters and their background and their uh, the character development. Uh, but I, I can highly recommend it, especially for the the gritty uh, Australian outback atmosphere. And Jane Harper has also, or is also writing a crime series, uh, the Aaron Falk series. She has published two books in that series, um, which of course I can recommend as well, especially the first one, The Dry, is really, really good. But if you're more into a standalone, then I would suggest uh, The Lost Man. Number three. Uh, one of the prompts is read an indigenous author. So I picked a crime novel written by an indigenous author, and that is Nicole Watson's 2011 book, The Boundary. Um, the premise of the book is that um, there is a um, very expensive um, development project that is to be developed. <laughs> the houses are built on an Aboriginal side, on a uh, religious side. So the people, um, the orig uh, uh, Aboriginal people file a claim in order to prevent the building, but their claim is rejected. That's when the book opens, um, and the judge who rejects the claim is then subsequently murdered. The body count um, increases, the development lawyer is also murdered, and we follow uh, an Aboriginal, young Aboriginal detective, Jason Matthew, um, and his older colleague, uh, trying to solve the crime. Uh, it's fast paced, it's very suspenseful, it's also uh, quite political. There is some political commentary, you know, on, on the. Um, uh, on the issue of uh, real estate development and on Aboriginal sites, things like that. But the core is a suspenseful, page-turning thriller. My next pick is for those of you who uh, enjoy historical crime fiction. Um, and my pick uh, for this is Solara Gentle series, the Roland Sinclair series. The first book uh, I will leave up here, um, A Few Right Thinking Men, was published in 2010, and there are uh, eight books followed, so she is now at book nine. The last book published is book nine. 
Um, so Lara Gentle was born in Sri Lanka, um, um, then moved to Australia. Uh, she studied astrophysics, can you believe it? And then worked as a corporate lawyer before starting to write her crime fiction uh, with this debut in 2010. Now the series centers around um, our main character, um, Roland Sinclair. Um, the book is set in 1933, so in the Depression years, and uh, Roland Sinclair is rich. He is really rich. He's a rich gentleman. And the first book, uh, we have um, a dinner. Roland goes out to dinner with his uncle, um, and then subsequently, um, I mean, not subsequently to the dinner, but later, <laughs> his uncle uh, is murdered. Uh, now, the police, at least that's what, what Roland thinks, the police doesn't really do much um, to solve the crime. So Sinclair is a, a private, you know, uh, investigator in the sense, or he becomes a private investigator. So it's not a police procedural, and he investigates uh, the murder of his uncle himself. Um, most of the subsequent eight books in the series are also set in Australia, um, except uh, for the last one uh, where um, uh, uh, Sinclair travels to Shanghai in order you know, to do something there, and then the murder takes place in Shanghai. Um, it's... Um, it's uh, um, the, the historical setting is, is really well drawn, the Depression years, uh, the 1933, plus years in Australia. Um, the character of Roland Sinclair, he is, you know, a, a bit goofy in a way, a, a, this a gentleman-like figure. Um, I mean, I wouldn't compare him to Miss Marple, but he has his quirks and then, you know, it, he, he, he of course always solves the crimes, but if you are into this kind of historical um, fiction crime, then this is a perfect uh, series for to start uh, for Aussie April. Oh, and I should also mention if you think Solari Gentil is an author you might be interested in, but maybe don't want to commit to a series yet, uh, she has recently published a standalone, uh, Crossing the Lines, in 2017, uh, which is set in modern uh, day Australia, and we follow a writer, a crime writer, Madeline, um, who is working on a crime novel, and um, uh, uh, she gets very much involved in the creation, um, uh, her main character, Edward. Um, so it's the, this is not your typical crime book, maybe, so I don't know whether my suggestion that you should pick that up in order to f see whether you like uh, Solari Gentil's style. Uh, because it's more of the blurring boundaries between an author and uh, her creation. Uh, but anyway, I wanted to mention it. So if you're looking for a standalone, Crossing the Lines is also a possibility. The next one is a modern Australian classic, and that is John Lindsay's Picnic at Hanging Rock, first published in 1967. John Lindsay was an... Um, early 20th century writer, and this is her most famous book. It's set in 1900 in Australia in um, a very prestigious school for girls, the Appleyard College. Um, we meet the characters, the headmistress, and various of the uh, girls, who are, uh, young women who attend the school, um, and they have an outing, uh, uh, and three of the girls... Uh, depart from the group and climb a rock and disappear. And then that's not, this is not a spoiler because this is basically how the book opens. And then the book follows um, what happens uh, with the school, with the college, uh, with various friends of the missing girls, um, how they all cope with it. Um, I'm not going to tell you whether the, the girls will be found or not, because that would be a spoiler, but I will say it is a book where not all the loose ends are tied up neatly at the end of the book. It has a, a gothic feel to it, um, uh, in, in, in the sense that it's it's mysterious. You don't know really what happens, and that has a kind in, in a kind of a gothicy way. Uh, there is no, you know, uh, I don't want to give the wrong impression. It's not uh, magical realism or ghost story in any sense, but it has for me. It has this gothicy feel to it. Um, it's 
uh, more a character study um, than um, uh, your typical uh, uh, whodunit. Um, and it, it gives a very, also a very um, in-depth view of 1900s Australian society. Uh, I mean, most of the, uh, the, the young women who attend the college are obviously from a quite a rich background, but not all of them. So there is some tension there, class tension. And it's just um, a, a delightful read. So I can highly recommend it if you want to delve into more of a modern classic in Australian crime fiction than Picnic at Hanging Rock is certainly uh, a perfect uh, book. And my last pick is for those of you who rather read nonfiction uh, when they read crime, so a true crime story, and that is Hel Helena, Helen Garner's book, The House of Grief, published in 2014. Um, the book follows or is centered around uh, a real crime that happened in 2005 when um, a youngish father in his 30s uh, drives his car with his three young sons in the back um, uh, off the road uh, uh, into the water. Uh, he saves himself, but the three boys drown. And Helen Garner then follows the trial. So it's it's a it's not a true crime story in the sense that we have to find out who did it, but uh, uh, the the father Robert is arrested and he's charged with murder. He says that he didn't want to kill the boys; it was an accident. He couldn't save them, and uh, Helen Garner then follows the trial. Um, if you look at my Goodreads rating, you will see that I only quote unquote gave it three stars, and I want to say two things about that. Uh, my three stars mean it's a good book. It was just not exceptionally good for me. And that is, I think, because I'm a lawyer myself and I find some of the observations about the trial system just not that interesting because I know that anyway. But most of you who fortunately are not lawyers will certainly find that book much more interesting. So if you are into that kind of, you know, I follow a trial and the observations of an author and her own thoughts about whether or not uh, Robert is guilty, then The House of Grief is a perfect book for you. So those were my suggestions for the crime ladies, but also for Aussie April and whether or not you participate in Aussie April, you want to pick up the crime books maybe anyway. Uh, let me know down in the comments uh, whether you read any of the books or whether you have any other Aussie crime novels that you want to uh, recommend to me. Thank you very much for watching as always and I'll see you all soon in the next one. Bye-bye.